this week's seminar. So today's speaker is Yasaman Fassan from Tehran, from the Institute for Research in Fundamental Sciences. So Yasaman did her PhD at CISA in 2004, 2004 and then um, she was also part of the time at Slack. Uh, and then moved back to Tehran and got a postdoctoral position there. And since 2008, she's a faculty member and has her own group in Tehran. So Yasaman has been working on, on neutrino physics, dark matter, supersymmetry, LHC physics on a wide range of topics. And she's specifically an expert in neutrino physics. And today she will tell us about how to search for new physics using the forward experiments. So based on new and SND at LHC um, and, and how to detect neutrinos there and to search um, for new physics in neutrinos. So please, yes, Alan. Okay. okay, first I would like to thank you for the invitation. Uh, as Michael said, I am going to speak about forward experiments and I hope that I can convince you that these experiments are ideal places to look for um, new physics that involves uh, new particles with masses around a uh, few GeV and um, coupled to neutrinos and those that uh, go through chain decays. Okay, uh, we are all familiar with LHC. Uh, LHC completed its uh, first two rounds uh, about 10 years ago. It announced the discovery of a new scalar that uh, happened to be the standard model Higgs. Uh, now it is starting in its uh, run three, uh, which will um, last until end of 2025. When we talk about LHC, most of the people think about uh, its main detectors, ATLAS, CMS, and LHCb and ALICE. But it is good to remember that LHC, in addition to these large or wonderful detectors, have a few other smaller detectors. For example, in the previous runs, LHCF, standing for LHC forward experiment, um, located in the forward direction, studied uh, pi zeros emitted in the forward direction. During the run three of LHC, um, a few forward experiments will collect data. Maybe the most famous among them is PHASER, which was pro uh, proposed first. PHASER stands for forward search experiment. But in addition to this rather well-known detector, there are, uh, um, there are two other detectors, phaser nu and SND at LHC that I am going to talk about. These two experiments are designed to um, study neutrinos emitted from the interaction point of ATLAS. Phaser nu uh, is located in front of phaser detector uh, in the TI-12 cavern. Uh, something like 480 meters away uh, from the Atlas interaction point. Um, well, neutrinos uh, can be produced in the interaction point. They travel this distance. Uh, they should uh, traverse 10 meters of concrete and 90 meters of rock to reach phaser. No. Phaser is not suitable for uh, studying neutrinos because it is Hello, but uh, phaser nu is designed for this purpose. Here you can see the fluxes of th uh, all three types of neutrinos and anti neutrinos predicted for the location of uh, phaser nu. Of course, uh, we expect large flux of neon neutrino and anti neutrino from pion decay. For energies higher than one TV, muon neutrinos from k ion decay, as you see, dominate over those coming from pion decay. But uh, more interestingly, uh, there is uh, we expect also electron neutrino flux from coming mainly from three body decay of k ions, as well as even uh, tau neutrinos coming from charm decay and also uh, tau anti-neutrino. 
The detector of phaser nu is uh, made of thousand emulsion films interleaved with uh, one millimeter thick tungsten plates. And um, it can uh, detect neutrinos by looking for their charge current interactions. Uh, the remarkable point is that uh, even tau track can be reconstructed thanks to the superb spatial resolution of the detector. The size of the detector is 25 uh, centimeter times 25 centimeter and times 1.35 meters. Um, and the mass is 1.2 tons. And the expected number of neutrino events uh, are around this 1,000 um, electron neutrinos, 20,000 muon neutrinos, and around 20 tau neutrinos. Uh, let us see what kind of new physics uh, phaser nu can also search for in addition to studying standard model neutrinos. Well, this uh, question has been uh, asked and addressed in um, literature quite a lot for phaser. Uh, the potential of phaser for searching for new physics has been studied. For example, the kind of new physics that phaser can study is uh, is to look for dark photons that are produced at the interaction point, but with various processes, then the dark photon can travel the rock and concrete and reach phaser detector and uh, give rise a, to a signal. If uh, no signal is found, uh, then these bounds can be set on the parameter space of the dark photon. But my focus here is phaser no. Um, uh, the collaboration itself uh, had noticed that phaser nu could look for um, three plus fun uh, scenario with astral neutrino with mass around 40 electron volt through the oscillation. And the parameter range that can be uh, probed uh, for three plus one uh, neutrino splitting with the neutrino, astral neutrino with splitting of 40 electron volt mixed with uh, active neutrinos uh, is shown here. Uh, except for this case, uh, it seems that phaser nu cannot uh, improve much uh, the present uh, bounds. Uh, However, here uh, I'm going to show you that there are other kinds of new physics that phaser no uh, can probe. Uh, the rest of the talk is based on these uh, papers. Uh, first of all, it would be wonderful to for look for dark matter by phaser. But we should ask what kind of dark sector can be probed with phaser no. Uh, I'll just remind you the distribution of uh, parton functions, and uh, I remind you that uh, when we go to small biochem variables, uh, the parton distribution functions increase, meaning that uh, inside protons, there is a large number of partons carrying only a small fraction of the proton energy. Now, consider two colliding uh, partons uh, with biochem variables x1 and x2. If uh, one, uh, x1 is around 0.1 and x2 is around 10 to minus 7, which is a small value, then um, the center of mass energy of these two partons will be uh, around GV. This means that if there are some uh, uh, GV scale new particles with small coupling to partons, then they can be produced and uh, can be emitted in the forward direction because of this, this um, hierarchy between X1 and X2. It will be highly boosted in the direction of the first momentum. Uh, this is just simple kinematics. <clears throat> now, uh, suppose that interaction of um, two protons produce 
uh, such new particles, uh, particle that I indicate with X prime, then X prime, uh, let us suppose that uh, decays rather fast in uh, close to interaction point to two feebly interactive particles that can uh, are metastable and they can uh, reach the detector because they are so feebly interacting. Then so let us suppose that these X particles uh, come to uh, phaser nu or phaser and then uh, decay to standard model particles and, and possibly some uh, dark sector particles align with them. Uh, well, in this case, both phaser nu and phaser can uh, see the signal uh, and study it and make a discovery. Uh, but my point in this study is that what uh, is interesting about phaser nu is that it can distinguish the different uh, possible uh, decay modes. Well, we don't know what X is made of. It, uh, it's the, well, we can speculate about its possible uh, decay modes, which uh, is infinite. Uh, practically, for example, X can decay to just a pair of standard model fermions like muon and antimuon. Another possibility is that a third particle allowing them uh, will be emitted. This third particle may be dark matter, for example, or X particle can decay to a pair of uh, yet new uh, uh, neutral particles that inside the detector, they decay. And finally, X particle can decay to a pair of uh, neutral particles plus uh, dark matter. And uh, although this one uh, is not minimalistic and uh, sounds rather complicated, but uh, as we shall see, theoretically, this is uh, motivated if we want to have dark matter of mass of G. Okay, great. Uh, my point is that, um, well, phaser nu can distinguish between, not only can see uh, a signal and discover this new particle X, but it can also tell us what are its decay modes and tell something about uh, the mass of this uh, particles produced and, the, uh, and can prove whether a third particle along this eta and eta uh, bar that can decay to standard model particles are produced or not. Okay, uh, we still don't know what dark matter made of, so this opens the way for speculation. Uh, for long time, WIMP weakly interacting massive particle, as you know, had the hegemony. Uh, it was considered D, the dark matter candidate, but uh, failure to see it so far has broken this uh, hegemony. And in recent years, in the last 10 years, uh, model builders and uh, experimentalists both have come out of their comfort zone of 100 GB to 1 TV, and they are thinking about, we are thinking about um, possibility of having dark matter with outside this range, basically any uh, mass above 10 to minus 21 electron volt up to uh, even uh, primordial light. Okay, um, well, even if, even if uh, dark matter particle is not made of WIMP, the uh, well-known scenario, it's still its production can be thermal and its uh, abundance can be set with uh, freeze out scenario. Uh, for mass around uh, few GV is still, uh, if the analytic cross section is around one, Pico barn, uh, the right abundance can be achieved through a freeze out scenario. Uh, well, now consider dark matter with mass of few uh, GV, uh, which couples to standard model particles uh, via a mediator with mass M and coupling G. Uh, if the annihilation of dark matter is supposed to be to uh, ordinary standard model particles such as electron, muon, uh, quarks, light quarks, uh, gluons, or photons, then uh, direct searches uh, set 
an upper bound on ratio of the mass of the mediator over the coupling, because if uh, this value was uh, small, it should, uh, this uh, mediator should have discovered so far. Then um, using this bound, we find that the allylation cross section to these particles uh, will be too small uh, to have the right abundance. So uh, if uh, dark matter particles ever come to a thermal equilibrium, then they will overclose the universe because their abundance will be too large. Uh, this was an observation made by these two famous physicists uh, long ago, but there are, of course, uh, some ways to avoid this bug. One famous um, remedy is that dark matter does not directly um, annihilate to standard model particles, but annihilate to a pair of uh, neutral particles, which eventually decay to standard model particles. Then. Uh, the mediator, uh, the, there is no bound on the mediator and coupling from direct uh, experiments. And this ratio can be relatively uh, small, around 100 GB, giving to the desired uh, annihilation cross section. Uh, then eta particle can uh, decay to standard model particle as long as the mass of eta is larger than 10 MeV and its lifetime is smaller than one second. If, uh, in the early universe, it decays um, long before big bang nucleus synthesis uh, era, so uh, it's safe from uh, demands. I should mention that in the past, the criterion for dark matter model building was uh, uh, minimality, but uh, there has been a shift of paradigm in the mindset of dark matter model building builders. Um, now we favor richer uh, phenomenology to uh, minimality. And this is partly coming from uh, this simple observation that the visible sector is not so minimal. There are so many species with different kind of interactions. And this is what makes life dazzling. Uh, if uh, visible matter was supposed to be composed of only one single species, then uh, we as uh, nature as we know and we as uh, humans made of uh, carbon and blah, blah, uh, would not even exist. With this observation, uh, well, it seems that uh, well, dark matter, uh, which uh, contributes even more than visible matter to a whole budget of the universe, um, shouldn't be minimal. Why should it be minimal? And in fact, it would be boring if it is so. So in recent years, uh, people have started thinking about multiple component dark matter with uh, some non-trivial interactions among themselves. And uh, they uh, also dark matter, dark sector with possibility of uh, chain decays have become popular. Now, uh, the question is that if dark matter is uh, rather complicated with many species, but how we can know about it? My claim in this talk is that Phaser Nu uh, provides a tool, uh, to useful tool to um, uh, look at uh, or probe at least a class of dark matter particles, uh, which involve chain decays of GeV scale particles. Okay, uh, so uh, for, for this, uh, we built a toy model. Uh, we introduced this X prime particle, uh, which can uh, produce in abundance in interaction point. We take the uh, coupling of X prime to partons rather large so that, uh, so we can have uh, high statistics. Then X prime can decay to this people uh, interacting X particles. X particles travel up to phaser and then uh, they decay to the dark matter, which shows up as missing energy and momentum, and a pair of uh, neutral metastable particles, which decay with a decay length of around one millimeter to 10 centimeter inside the phaser node detector, uh, two pair of fermions, which can be detected. So this is the topology of the event, uh, X particle, comes in the forward direction from the direction of the interaction point. 
inside the uh, detector decays to three invisible particles Y escapes, but it and it have uh, bar decay to pairs of leptons whose form momentum can be uh, well constructed. Also the interaction uh, vertex, uh, the decay vertex can be uh, reconstructed quite uh, with high precision. So the, the um, tracks of eta and eta bar can be also constructed. And uh, where these tracks um, intersect can be um, recognized as the detailed vertex of the X particle that comes from the direction of the interaction point. This is another view of it. Um, well, um, as I said, the decay vertex of eta and eta bar can be uh, reconstructed, and then uh, their four momenta uh, can be reconstructed. The direction of the track can be reconstructed with rather good precision. And uh, as a result, the X decay vertex can be uh, found. Now, um, let me uh, tell a few words about this X prime particle. Um, first of all, I should mention that the reason why I am introducing this X prime is to have larger statistics. In principle, we could assume a coupling between X particles and uh, partons too without the need for X prime. Then uh, there, we, we were rather constrained if the coupling to uh, partons was too large, X could not reach uh, the detector. So uh, the reason why we introduce in this X prime is to have large statistics which we require for our studies. Now, what is X prime uh, made of? It can be identified, for example, with a uh, gauge boson of a, a combination of baryon number and lepton numbers or it can be uh, identified with a dark photon or a scalar. But uh, what we focused on was this pseudo-scalar uh, axion, which also couples to gluons. Um, and uh, well, uh, uh, this uh, coupling, uh, as has been shown in this paper, also uh, can help to um, remedy the um, so-called quality problem of QCD axion, but this is not uh, my concern. I just uh, use the coupling that uh, they have uh, introduced to build this model. Uh, and I, uh, we use the bounds that they have found on the uh, relevant coupling in their um, paper. Okay, then X prime decays uh, to X and X bar. Uh, notice that X prime uh, can decay to three uh, pions if the mass is large enough. So the coupling to X, X bar should be uh, rather large to allow fast decay to X, X bar before it has time to decay to hadrons. With a coupling uh, larger than 10 to minus six, this can be achieved. Uh, notice that X particles can be either a scalar or fermion. We, do, we are not, uh, for the time being, we are not going to um, discuss much about it. Uh, X prime can be produced by fusion of two gluons. Uh, the cross section uh, uh, um, is given by this relation, the partial cross section. Uh, uh, here, F uh, R part of distribution function of columns, uh, which should be um, computed at Q squared equal to uh, mass of the X prime squared. Uh, of course, these partons that interact have also a tiny uh, transverse momentum, the um, size of the transverse momentum will be of order of Fermi uh, momentum around 200 MeV. Uh, then because of this um, transverse momentum, uh, there will be a small uh, angle made by the momentum of X prime with the beam direction. We denote it with uh, theta t, which can be described uh, with pt over e 
X prime, which is a very tiny number. Uh, another point is that uh, in addition to uh, GG fusion producing X, uh, X prime two to one process, uh, there are these two to two uh, processes where along uh, X prime uh, gluon or uh, quark is also emitted. Uh, then the transverse uh, momentum of X prime can be relatively large. Uh, it might reach um, Atlas and CMS, but uh, for our um, analysis, we are interested only in um, forward uh, emitted X prime particles. Uh, the contribution of these uh, processes to such uh, X prime emitted in the direction of phaser nu is less than 20%. So in our analysis, we ignore them. Uh, then another point is that, um, uh, when X prime decays to a pair of X, uh, of course, uh, this X particle can uh, make a small angle with the direction of X prime momentum. The size of the angle uh, is shown with theta sub S and is uh, rather tiny. Um, in general, uh, however, it can be for general masses, it can be larger than theta t uh, that we uh, described before. Now, uh, notice that the angle that subtends the cross section of phaser nu from interaction point uh, is given by the um, size divided by the distance. Uh, we denoted it with theta d, it is uh, around five times 10 to minus four radians. Now, only X prime, uh, X particles emitted within this uh, angle will reach detectors. And this means that only a fraction of X particles reach the detector given by this ratio. Since uh, the um, X particles coming in the direction of phaser uh, are very close to, uh, to, to the forward direction. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the uh, energy of the mother X prime and daughter X given by this relation. Then putting this together, we can compute the spectrum, energy spectrum of uh, X particles reaching the detector. It is proportional to the luminosity, of course, this fraction F and uh, cross-section of course, and this ratio that uh, gives, is there a question? Which gives uh, the X prime, E X prime over the E X. Uh, this fraction, uh, I remind you, is um, proportional to the area of the detector. Now, here you can see the um, spectrum of X particles reaching the phaser detector uh, for this value of the coupling between X prime and uh, partons and these masses uh, that we have assumed. This is for run three of the LHC with 150 inverse momentum bar data. Uh, you see a band instead of a curve, and this band comes from uncertainties on uh, the uh, parton distribution function. Please remember that uh, the dominant effect came uh, from partons, pair of partons, in which one of the partons had very small Bjorken uh, factor, around 10 to minus 7 or so. At these uh, Bjorken factors, uh, the parton distribution function have large uncertainties. That's why we have this large, rather uh, wide band. Uh, anyway, integrating over energy, we will find that something like uh, 100,000 X particles can uh, pass through the uh, phaser detector, but not, of course, all of them decay inside the detector. We should multiply uh, the flux with the probability that X uh, decays inside the detector to obtain the number of events. Uh, 
the probability is, uh, of course, a product of the probability that X particles do not decay up to the detector times uh, the um, probability that they decay inside the detectors. S uh, sub S here is the detector length. Now remember that this uh, flux was proportional to area, and this is proportional to the detectors. So uh, the whole thing, the whole number of events, of course, uh, will be proportional to the volume as expected. Okay, uh, now um, here, uh, well, um, I should uh, emphasize that the um, signal that we are talking about is background free because it is very complicated, but there is no, nothing uh, in the standard model that can mimic that. Uh, so even seeing one signal can be considered a discovery. By not seeing any signal, we can set a bound on uh, lambda for a given uh, decay rate. Um, here, uh, this, this lambda um, described the um, um, coupling of this X prime, the axion-like particle, to uh, particles. And uh, the horizontal axis is the lifetime of X particle. Uh, well, this is the lower bound on lambda that phaser nu can set. This is what uh, its upgrade for high luminosity LHC can achieve. Uh, and as you see, um, even phaser nu can uh, probe a part of uncharted territory. Uh, well, what is that this, uh, probability of the de uh, decaying of X inside the detector is at best something like 1%. I don't know why this is skipping. Uh, is at best 1%. So uh, the number of events uh, at the de detector will be something like a few hundred at best. Uh, if we are lucky and uh, the couplets are close to the um, bounds. Um, okay, now let us see whether uh, we can distinguish that really our toy model is correct. Uh, this is something that can be done by phaser. No, phaser can see the signal, but it cannot, for example, tell us whether a Y particle is emitted along this edges or not. Okay, um, first of all, the position of the vertices can be constructed, the, uh, these two vertices can be constructed with remarkable precision of 0.4 micrometer, microns. Uh, and the, their direction, the direction of the final leptons can be uh, constructed a bit better than uh, 0.06 milli radian. Then, uh, and also their energies can be constructed. So the four momenta, I don't know why this is, the four momenta of eta bar and eta can be constructed um, with precision. Uh, given uh, here, uh, then um, also this uh, point uh, vertex can be reconstructed. Uh, by um, measuring the transverse momentum of eta and eta bar by reconstructing the transverse momentum, uh, we can check whether there is a transverse momentum missing, which can be attributed to pr the production of this uh, dark matter particle, which is Y. Uh, considering the um, fact that all these particles are emitted in uh, forward direction because of uh, the high boosts, uh, the question is that whether it will be possible to uh, considering the uncertainty to reconstruct the transverse missing momentum. Uh, we investigated this and found out that uh, if we are lucky and the two uh, etas are uh, emitted in the direction such that their transverse momentum, their momentum projected to the X, Y, uh, plane make an angle smaller than 90 degrees, then the missing transverse momentum will be large enough to be uh, to be resolved. 
other was night. Now, suppose that we have three, uh, something like 100 events in the detector. Uh, about half of them, 50 events, will be in this uh, orientation. So for them, we can uh, distinguish uh, that there is a Y particle missing, half not. So the discovery can be made. Uh, the four momentum of eta particle can be reconstructed by reconstructing the four momenta of L and L bar uh, with a precision of 40% for one pair. And we have, if we have something like 100 pairs, then precision can uh, be very good at a level of four percent. The mass of uh, eta can be rec reconstructed with four percent uncertainty. As I said, also the tract can be reconstructed. So uh, we can obtain some information on the lifetime of eta uh, two. Mm, uh, but um, of course, decay is a statistical uh, stochastic uh, concept. Uh, if we have something like 100 events, the, at best we can reach a precision of 10% in uh, extracting the lifetime of eta. Uh, in principle, uh, how much is the opening angle for the ETAs? Is, uh, 10 to it, minus uh, 2 or so. They are tiny. Okay, it's tiny, tiny, because everything is boosted in the forward Exactly, direction. exactly. Even a 10 to minus 3, depending on the energy. Between 10 to minus 2 to 10 to minus 3. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we have excellent uh, um, reconstruction of the direction. So how, how close together can the tracks be in phase on you? And you can still reconstruct it? Uh, well, around uh, sub milliradian, 0.06 or so, milliradian. Yeah, okay. yeah, 10 to minus uh, 4, to some even less than 10 to minus 4. Uh, OK, good. Now, mm, in principle, by studying uh, the energy spectrum of uh, events, one can obtain some information to X uh, on X masses of X and Y particles, but uh, this can be done only on a statistical basis. And low statistics and uncertainties on PDF uh, make it a little bit uh, difficult and challenging. So we did, didn't discuss that. Uh, I have a few slides on um, how this can be, uh, well, a model building. Uh, as I said, in this case, uh, Y particles are dark matter candidates uh, who's, which can be produced in the early universe by decay of this X prime particles, which couple to uh, coulombs. Um, then uh, they can annihilate to eta and eta bar. Uh, they, in, for example, if we take X and Y both scalar particles, the intermediate particle that uh, for the mediator for annihilation the, can be identified this, with this X particle. Uh, remember this um, discussion in the earlier slides that I um, talked about the challenges of obtaining one pick of one uh, annihilation cross section for GeV scale uh, particles. Uh, here, this X can be light. Uh, however, let me skip the details of the model building. If you are interested, you can see them in our paper. Uh, the take-home message from this part of my talk is that uh, Phaser Nu, with uh, superb ability to reconstruct tracks, is ideal to study new long-lived GeV scale feebly inter interacting particles that go through chain decays. Um, and um, this opens up intriguing possibility for exploring GeV scale dark matter sector. This cannot be done, for example, by phaser, but can be done by phaser node to reconstruct the chain. Now, let me move on to the second part of my talk, uh, well, which is based on this observation that at phaser nu uh, and SND, there is going to be a large flux of muon neutrinos and antineutrinos. So uh, we um, considered the possibility to uh, 
study exotic decay is exotic scatterings of uh, mu uh, neutrinos and anti neutrinos involved with new physics involving new um, dry neutrinos. Uh, why are we interested on new physics in the muon sector uh, is uh, the reason is that uh, well uh, we have some observations ob uh, indicating that maybe there are new interactions in, uh, involving the second generation of leptons uh, coming from a measurement of uh, anomalous magnetic dipole moment of neon. Uh, let us suppose that uh, the second generation of uh, leptons coupled to a new uh, light um, right-handed neutrino, and by light, I mean with mass around a few GV, and a new uh, Higgs doublet. Integrating out the Higgs doublet, we can obtain this kind of effective interaction between uh, quarks and um, muon and also mm, muon neutrino. Uh, we imposed uh, this global symmetry to uh, get rid of unwanted um, couplings uh, and to simplify models. So thanks to this model, uh, phi particles uh, can mm, couple only to the first generation of quarks and only to second generation of leptons. As a bonus, uh, we can explain the smallness of masses of U and D quarks uh, because their masses uh, break this uh, global U1 symmetry. Um, well, fortunately, fortunately for us model builders, uh, the um, Masses of uh, new um, a scalar uh, Higgs X scalar is not so um, constrained. They can be uh, heavier than something like 300 or even 250 GV without any bound. Uh, and if we put together these constraints, we find that these effective couplings can be as large as 10 to minus five GV minus two. With such coupling, uh, me on neutrinos coming to phaser nu or SND at LHC can interact with nucleus, uh, producing this uh, new right handed particle. Uh, here you can see the spectrum of N and M bar uh, at phaser nu, um, and also numbers are given for uh, SND2. Uh, here we have uh, shown the average energy of right-handed neutrino produced by a neutrino of uh, this energy at phaser nu. Uh, this, what is the signal? Well, muon neutrino comes, produces uh, right-handed neutrino. This vertex will look like just simple neutral current interaction. But then uh, this N is emitted very um, close to the uh, forward direction with an angle of size 10 to minus two or so, or even smaller. Then uh, N uh, decays uh, to uh, a pair of quarks plus muon or muon neutrino. The second vertex may look like a, um, charge current interaction or again a neutral current interaction. But mm, the feature of the signal for in our model is that these two vertices uh, are uh, in front of each other. One is in front of the other. Uh, then uh, this can help to reduce background. In principle, by uh, accumulation of two neutral current events or a charge current event in front of neutral current can uh, show up as a background, but the probability of uh, finding is the second uh, vertex uh, within a cone with this size in, uh, in front of the other is very tiny, given by this the um, volume of this um, imaginary cone divided by the size of the detector. Uh, considering the finite number of neutral current and charge current events during 
each data taken period, we find that the background from uh, neutral to um, successive neutral current uh, events is uh, less than one and around 0.02, and that from a muon, a muon charge current event in front of uh, a neutral current is uh, again less than uh, one. So basically, this uh, signal is background free too. Then, uh, but even again, even one event is uh, can be considered as um, discovery by not seeing uh, any signal. Uh, this bounds can be set on the values of the coupling. As you see, even SND at LHC can improve on the pr uh, present con uh, constraint. And uh, the upgrade of phaser during the LHC uh, can uh, improve by two orders of magnitude. Notice that uh, for uh, N lighter than GV, uh, no bad experiment could already probe uh, uh, this um, scenario. So we are basically interested on uh, masses heavier than 3 GB. Mm, heavier ones could be produced at NUTEV, but NUTEV did not have uh, the enough spatial resolution uh, to <clears throat> resolve the mm, displaced vertex. So uh, the vertex, uh, the signal would look like a neutral current or charge current event. Now, if a phaser nu discovers this signal, this uh, means that uh, new TEF collaboration should go, should go back to its data and reanalyze it uh, to uh, uh, extract PDFs and other information that they have used because uh, they had some background from um, for, for their analysis. They had some signals coming from this new physics that they have not taken into account. Okay, the components of this new uh, Higgs can be produced at uh, CMS and ATLAS and then can be, can be produced at the interaction point and can be uh, studied at CMS and ATLAS. Uh, so, um, but uh, looking for the signals uh, requires customized search at these data sectors. Then the idea is that uh, discovery by phaser nu can be a uh, warning or for them to go and search for this specific uh, kind of um, signal. And then <clears throat> uh, one advantage is that uh, CMS and ATLAS can uh, distinguish whether this uh, right-handed neutral node that they are discovering is of Majorana type or Dirac type by looking for the same sign left. Okay, uh, our motiv motivation was, uh, of course, uh, the magnetic dipole moment of Mion. Uh, what with this coupling at best, if even if the mm, coupling, the Yukawa coupling, uh, is around three, which saturates the um, the vertebrate bound, uh, the magnetic dipole moment can at most be one fourth of what observed. If we want to account for the whole discrepancy, we may uh, introduce one more than one. Uh, right-handed neutrino, we can have four copies of it. Then uh, signal for phaser nu and SND uh, at LHC can be even more interesting because all of these uh, right-handed neutrinos can be produced inside the detector and then heavier one can go through chain decays producing lighter ones aligned with muon uh, pairs or muon neutrino pairs. So we can have this kind of chain uh, decay series uh, at phaser nu, which will be a spectacular signal. Again, this uh, second signal will be within uh, a small cone in the direction of the first signal. Now, let me summarize this part of the, my talk. Um, forward experiments can test this kind of interaction between muon neutrinos, right-handed neutrinos, and quarks, as long as the right-handed one has a mass lighter than 15 GB. Uh, the signature uh, of the minimal model with only one right-handed neutrino will be a um, charge 
currently or neutral current vertex uh, located in the forward direction uh, after a first neutral current signal. And this such a discovery uh, can be an alert for CMS and ATLAS to look for uh, the relevant uh, uh, scalars. Um, and then CMS and ATLAS can uh, tell us whether uh, right hand neutrinos were Majorana or Dirac. Um, this minimal model contributes only one fourth of the deviation of magnetic dipole moment. If we want to <clears throat> uh, account for whole deviation, we can uh, introduce more than one uh, right hand neutrino, which can go through chain decays uh, inside the detector and uh, this spectacular uh, dimion signals. Um, how much time do I have? If I have time, I can go to the third part. Otherwise I can stop here and take the questions. Um, maybe it's better to look at the uh, questions. So, so, okay, so uh, uh, questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th thanks a lot, Yasaman. Very interesting talk in those two models. Are there questions? Maybe I can start. So, so in that in that second model that you looked at, you you, um, you, you can introduce multiple right hand neutrinos. Could, could could you also do leptogenesis with those at those at those low scales? I mean, kind of by oscillations, the the way how it's done in the new MSM. Something like uh, Ahmadov. Uh... Robakov has made of uh... exactly exactly because now you have multiple right hand neutrinos. I'm just wondering whether there could be another maybe reason. Maybe it's possible, but we didn't think about it. But that's uh, an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uh, um, are, are other questions? I, I have a couple of. I have an experimental question. Um, just about how the what the reconstruction schedule is, because these these experiments with uh, passive material emulsion sandwich, the emulsion has to be has to be then developed and scanned. So, yes. what is the cycle for for this work? How how is it done? Uh, well, great question. Um, uh, first of all, please notice that this is. Uh, these experiments are located 480 meters far from uh, the, the, uh, the interaction points, so they are safe. It is not, yep. uh, well, uh, suppose that LHC is still running, so one can go, even a person can go and take out the emulsions and uh, process them. So. Uh, pr processing uh, period of these detectors uh, doesn't require some shutdown of the uh, beam. Uh, so the plans are that for a few weeks uh, to one month or so, uh, they um, uh, collect the data and then uh, take the emulsion and replace it and process it uh, during the run. Okay, so sort of a several weeks exposure and then continually replaced yes, with yes. scanning in parallel. Yes, uh, and, this can be done. If it was uh, close to the interaction point, it would be dangerous, but this year uh, it's no, safe. No, but at 400 meters and yeah. there's no, yeah. So, um, and the it's purely emulsion. It's not a hybrid detector like Chorus. Is that correct? Uh, it is emulsion interleaved with tungsten plates. Yeah, yeah, but it's not it, it's it's not interfaced with um, with tracking detectors in an attempt to target events in the emulsion. You just you just go and you scan the emulsion to. As far as I know, yes, uh, it's just simple emulsion, and the layers are very thin. Yeah. Uh, so, so how, how well can they distinguish particles? Or, or could, can they distinguish particles, kind of like, like an electron or muon, which is produced? Or, or is it too much in the forward direction that everything looks like a straight line? 
Uh, well, electron and muon have different sorts of uh, tracks inside uh, medium. Uh, muon uh, does not give rise to pair uh, production. Electron does. Uh, has the Bremistra mm -hmm. and so so. These two can be uh, distinguished by just the shape of the track. Okay. Yeah, you see, uh, for, let me enlarge this. Uh, Mion has a um, straight uh, track, but electron does uh, pair production and remister alone. So. After something like one centimeter at this energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No, no, that's good. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, there, this phaser and phaser nu can talk to each other. There is an interface uh, detector. So, for example, muons uh, initiating inside uh, phaser nu can also go through phaser nu. Uh, initiating inside phaser nu can uh, go and reach phaser and can, can be detected there too. Can you just show the image of the detector again to remind me the phaser structure? Uh, well, a couple of slides back uh, that, that shows phaser together with phaser. It's fun. Uh, perhaps one more. No more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So. So muons produced in phase and new can be reconstructed. Yes. I didn't have time to explain, but we also studied the possibility of detecting uh, muons that are produced inside the rock before phaser uh -huh. new, uh, reaching phaser new, uh, from new physics. Of course, also muons produced at interaction point or the rock within the standard model can also reach phaser nu. This is one of the sources of background, not for this type of the signal that I discussed because um, they cannot mimic the type of the signals. But for uh, some, um, for example, muon uh, neutrino detection, they, are, they provide a signal. Uh, in one of our papers, we uh, discussed that if four events uh, of muons come at the same time, uh, then um, one can say that this comes from some uh, new physics um, interaction inside the rock before the detector. Uh, to, in order to do that, we need the scintillators to uh, record the timing because emulsion cannot record the timing of the event, but if it is equipped with this uh, scintillators or so, with something that has timing uh, capability, uh, effective um, volume of the phaser node detector can be enlarged for some sort of interaction, uh, some sort of signals by including uh, muons that penetrate the rock. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. So, so can, can actually phaser do anything for those two models? So as you mentioned later that, so, 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 so phaser new, so you, you certainly need the tracking, is that right? The, you need the track in order to reconstruct it or can phaser also provide any additional information? Yeah, for uh, the purpose of uh, describing dark sector, this first uh, part of the attack, uh, suppose that some of X particles come and uh, decay inside phaser rather than inside phaser node, it's quite likely. Then uh, phaser can study them and our data set will be larger. But phaser cannot then tell us that whether uh, this, what is the mass of eta, whether a third particle is produced along this eta and eta bar and things like those. For detailed analysis, we need phaser nu because it has a much better spatial and directional resolution. Um, for studying of the inter uh, interactions of neutrinos, whether standard model interactions or um, beyond standard model interactions, like the one that I discussed in the second part of the, my talk, Phaser, phaser is hopeless because it's hollow, neutrinos will not interact inside it. Uh, then we should only rely on phaser. 
and depending on the type of the signal, uh, we may even count on rock before a phase or no, uh, but then uh, that's more complicated. Uh, we should uh, know that uh, it doesn't come from any uh, standard model background. Mm -hmm. If you have yeah. two pairs of neutrinos, then uh, there is a hope. Okay, okay. So, so it's really you suppress the background a lot by, by having the tracks and yes. Um, can, can, can you explain briefly once more the uh, you, you wrote down a model, right? As so for, for that eta coupling to two leptons and then um, the, those x and x prime. Can, can you briefly explain once more the model or what, what is there? Mm, sure. Uh, the idea was not to really focus on model building, but was on uh, oh, showing the, 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 the demonstrating the um, capability of phaser nu. Mm -hmm. But uh, since we wanted to make a connection to dark matter, we also built the model. So, uh, for example, let us take and we consider different possibilities, whether X and Y are scalar or fermion or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, let us, for example, um, discuss this uh, case that they are both scalars. Uh, they should be either both a scalar or both fermion. We cannot have one scalar and other fermion okay. for obvious reasons. But now uh, we assume this kind of interactions. Uh, well. Uh, we can have all of them. Then um, here, uh, Y plays the role of the dark matter. It is the lightest one uh, and stable. And then it can uh, decay to pair of eta. It can allay to a pair of uh, eta eta bar by this uh, mediator, X mediator. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And, and then you have to couple those etas to the leptons, right? That's, uh, yes. It, it's that then just by mixing with the Higgs, the eta mixes with the Higgs? Or? Um, I, well, it was lying to him, Yeah, uh, that's one of your possibility. Another possibility is that we have another uh, Higgs doplet that uh, facilitates this. But ah, just with, uh, mixing with doplet. Higgs, we can do that. Yeah. Because they don't want too fast uh, decay of eta, so it can be um, Done. As long uh, as you want to see a track, you want to see a track, right? That's the. On the other hand, if eta is very long lived, then uh, it can first leave the detector. But uh, more importantly, if the lifetime um, um, is large, then it can ruin the big mass nuclear synthesis from dark matter uh, model building point of view. But we can consistently. Uh, couple it to pair of muons or electrons without violating anyone. Okay. Um, other questions? If not, let me just tell very quickly about this third idea that we discussed. Um, we in the third uh, paper, we discussed uh, the possibility of uh, having excess of tau events because our knowledge on tau uh, experimental knowledge is very very limited by now. Mm -hmm. uh, no practically will double the number of events that so far we have on tau. So we discussed the possibility of uh, this uh, beyond the standard model lepton flavor violating events mm -hmm. that can produce some excess of tau neutrinos because we have plenty of pions decaying at uh, interaction point. And uh, well, we build a model for that. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the message is that phaser nu cannot uh, improve the present bound from universality uh, of um, well, from pi nu bound. And this is the, um, the best that uh, phaser nu can do, phaser nu combined with SND. But uh, upgrade of phaser nu by studying the total number of events can improve a bit. However, if we study the, um, the 
if we been, been energy being the data and study the spectrum of tau events, uh, we can improve the present bound uh, much better by uh, upgrade of phaser new for high luminosity LHC. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. So, so how, how well can, okay, so, so it's basically you would produce a tau and then you have the tau track in the, in phaser new, mm -hmm. and that's basically how you clearly identify that it's a, tau neutrino instead of a muon neutrino or electron neutrino. Yes, tau is much short lived, uh, so you yeah. can identify. Uh, the problem is that how is not how to distinguish between muon neutrino and uh, electron neutrino. The problem, the challenge is how to reconstruct this very short um, track of tau uh, before decay. This is the usual problem, but phaser nu is designed to overcome it. Mm -hmm. overcome the challenge. So, and, and, and phase on U2 will be also an emulsion detector, just bigger? Yes, a... bigger, and it will be located in uh, another cavern, which is which will be built in a uh, forward facility, mm -hmm. not in the same direction. So th there are plans, uh, and well, there are some people advocating for uh, large, uh, for building larger caverns for uh, housing these forward experiments mm -hmm. for the next run, not uh, the one that yes. has just started. Okay, that's- So if you, have a right. new, if you have a new tower charged current interaction in phase and new, how long typically is the tower decay path? Uh, well, tau, uh, how large is the tau lifetime? How, 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 how long would the, the path of the tau track be in the detector before? Uh, I'm trying to um, compute it. Uh, lifetime of tau is 10 to minus 13 seconds, right? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I remember it as C tau. It's um, something like um, 87, 87 microns C tau. I need to. Micro. Uh, uh, would you please say again? I didn't. Uh... I think C times tau is something like, uh, yes, 87 microns. That's the number I remember. No, um, we have a gamma, gamma factor boost factor, which is around uh, 1,000. So you should multiply. 1, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 87 millimeters rather than 87 microns. Yes. Fine. But um, the um, a spatial uh, or uh, positional reconstruction um, resolution of phase and is far better than micro. It's around. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, a track like that is basically at infinite length as far as emulsion is concerned. Yes. yes. And they can also find the direction with good precision in, yes. in addition to uh, mm -hmm. re resolving the track. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, I haven't thought about phase on you at all. I was always only looking at phase on because it's the bigger detector, but here with that margin detector, that's... What is amazing about phaser nu is that uh, it was um, proposed for the first time in 2019, uh, shortly before the outbreak of the pandemic uh, in summer. In uh, and then very quickly it got uh, interest from the community. Uh, it approved. It um, was built. Now it's in place, uh, ready to take data. It was very very quick. SNDAT LHC was proposed even shortly after that, uh, and it's now ready. Mm -hmm. So SND LHC, what, what's, how does the detector work there? Yeah. Uh, it is uh, SND at LHC, um, LHC is located on the other side. One is in the right side of the interaction point, the other is in the left side. There are yeah. two, uh, and again at the same distance. It is just shortly off axis. Okay, and that's also an emulsion detector. Uh, it has several components. Part of it is on emulsion, but it has other components. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I should look at it. 
of the effect. Since it is a bit of excess, uh, the flux that it receives is smaller. But uh, I forgot to mention that most of these neutrinos are emitted in the for very forward direction. Why? Mm -hmm. Because because at forward directions, um, well, these are uh, produced by pi on decays, k on decays, and when we consider forward directions, uh, these are small energy momentum um, transfer regime, uh, so QCD is the strongest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I should look at that phase on you in more detail and SMB at LFC. Yeah, no. Th thanks. Thanks a lot, Yasaman. That was very interesting for me, at least, uh, to, to hear about those possibilities. Uh, Thank you for the invitation. And yeah. Right.